Hi everyone, this is Blue Kank and I'm back again with another review. Today I'm doing Valkyria Revolution. So I'm going to talk about the usual gameplay, graphics and sound. I'll go through the good points and the bad points and give you my overall first impressions. So sit back and enjoy. So before I talk about the gameplay, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the premise. So in the game, you, you're part of a country called Jutland. Jutland's a small country in a large continent called Europa. Now the issue is that Jutland is facing heavy economical sanctions from a base, an invading empire called the Rusi Empire. They've basically taken over other countries or forced others to fall in line with what they want over resources. Uh, the leader of the Rusi Empire is a, an emperor who's basically like Caesar, you know, a bit of an egomaniac, hellbent on domination. And that's the basic premise of the game, you lead a squad to fight against the Empire and you, as the gameplay unfolds you'll see what's happened at the start and the midst and towards the end of the war and all the other plot twists and turns that fall, fall vary. So let's start off with gameplay. So the gameplay in this instalment is very different to the previous Valkyria games. So in those games it was still all to do with warfare but how that would work is you had a set number of soldiers that you could uh, insert into battle so you'd have a number of positions to fill up and then once you uh, started battle it consists of turns so your side would take all their turns first so how it would work is each soldier would or sort of unit so it's, it's just a tank would have a set amount of movement in the battlefield which was fully 3d so you chose the unit you could start moving around and as you moved around a bar would appear which slowly deplete, deplete and that once that bar depleted you basically that unit couldn't move anymore once that movement was up you had an option to attack or take an action such as recover health or aid an ally depending on what the situation called for um, and then once all your units had took their turn the enemy units would do the same and so forth until you completed the mission or you were defeated in this game it's very different so it's all real-time combat There's, the only thing it is it's very it's you know similar to the previous games is as you're running around you can run around any time so there's no restrictions on movement but as you notice on each character, the, um, as I'm on the gameplay now, you can see that each one's got a sort of round, sort of round hood around each of their emblems. So as that emblem fills up with like, a yellow bar, it means you can take an action with your melee weapon. So each character can swing the weapon, um, but when the bar's emptied, it uses that action until it recharges in a few seconds. What you can do whilst you're waiting for that to recharge, or as an alternative to attacking your weapon, you can use alchemy, and alchemy is basically spells, so you can equip some guy with Ragnite, which is, has different effects, so there's different Ragnites for different elements, so um, elements you've got earth, wind, fire, water, so fire is strong against water, water strong against fire, both of them are weak against each other, earth strong against wind, wind strong against earth, and then you've got other Ragnites at the various effects such as healing. You can switch between any character at any point in battle, so by pressing up or down you can flip between characters. What you can also do, depending on what, it doesn't matter who you control, but what you can do as well is if you're attacking one character, you can issue orders to any other character on the on screen at the time, so you can tell them to take an action, use an item. Um, and that's basically it really. It's um, very different to the gameplay in the previous games, it's very similar to almost like Dynasty Warriors. The, although you do have guns in the game, the secondary weapons are not the main sort of source of weaponry in you know, fighting the game. It's all about using your melee weapon and the Ragnite, which is basically spells. Um, you can equip different Ragnite in between missions as well, by, from, and you can regain Ragnite by either buying it from the sort of merchants in between missions, or you can reclaim it from fallen enemies. The thing with this gameplay, it does have some tactical elements, so... You can choose um, temporarily to make your squad go fully offensive. So by basically pressing left or right on the D-pad, you can choose between offensive, support, free, or you know defensive, and that'll basically change the behavior of the AI temporarily uh, whilst you're attacking enemies. So if there's a, one big enemy, you might want to go on the offensive. Um, if you're getting a lot of firepower, you might want to go defensive. And by pressing the L one button, um, you can change whether your whole squad attacks the same enemy that, that your main character is attacking or you can choose partner mode so two members will go off and fight and then one of the other control, one of the other characters you don't control will fight alongside you or you can go solo and everybody does their own thing. The, the gameplay 
is, is very different, as I mentioned. Um, to be honest, um, although I enjoy the gameplay on this, it doesn't seem as good or enjoyable as the tactical elements of the previous game. So in the game play in the, in the last, you know, the last game that came out, we get missions could be quite long and were very tactical. So you have to choose wisely who, who you deploy in the field. Um, you, you know, maneuver your squad so you can they all fire together. You know, and, and activate buffs. On this game, the actual missions are very quick. You can be over in, you know, you know, quite a few minutes really. Whereas in the old games, you can have a you know mission could take up to an hour, an hour and a half sometimes, depending you know, on the pace of the battle. Uh, so it seems like the developers wanted to speed things up and move away from that turn-based you know battle system that I had in the previous games. I enjoyed it um, and the, on the games much more and this one although the gameplay is good at times it just doesn't feel like a Valkyria game it, I was a bit I was, you know, disappointed with it to really uh, just to sum it up um, it's, apart from the aesthetics and you know similar look of the characters you know as in the previous games in the series that's the only sort of a real sort of resemblance really um, and the, in fact, the fact that you've got Valkyries, which are these sort of mythical, sort of you know demigod type creatures, who've got you know unwieldy power, sort of supernatural elements. That's the sort of the old basis of the previous games. But um, aside from that, that's it. I mean, the only other sort of similarities in the other games, you can upgrade your weapons um, in between missions, and you can change the Ragnite, which is the spells you can equip on each character. And upgrade those, and then as you and you can also upgrade you, each character's melee weapon. Uh, but that's about it, really. Um, and aside from you know buying armor, or, you know buffing up armor, that's, there's no real similarities in the other games. It doesn't see, feel as cohesive for me, so it, that has been a bit of a letdown. So graphically, as you can see, um, it's sort of very in the fashion of a lot of other sort of JRPG games, so sort of hand drawn looking graphic, um, very anime looking. Um, I do like the graphical style, you know, it's not not realistic, but it, it sort of fits in well with the previous games in the series. It's something that did appeal to me in the other games, you know, the art style to it. A lot of bright colours, um, particle effects when using spells, finishes, combos, explosions. Um, you know, obviously, if you look at a game that's very realistic, in, in, you're not going to get that here. It's very comic booky, um, cartoonish. Uh, but it is pleasing to look at. Lighting's very good. Shading. There's different times we fight. We sort of nighttime missions, sort of in different environments. When you use things like smoke grenades, it all mixes in very nicely. Um, the only thing is during cutscenes, sometimes it feels like depending on how the camera's situated. It looks like you can't see the mouth movements of each character as they're talking. Now, all the game is sort of. You know, dubbed in English, you can have Japanese and English, what you know, voices during these cutscenes and in the gameplay. When you're watching the cutscenes, where because of the camera, the way it's being panned, you can't really tell if anyone's you know talking or who it is. It means that sometimes you kind of lose what's going on in the plot. Because there's quite a lot of characters where it shifts between different people during these long cutscenes, and it, you know it just feels a little very disjointed at times. Um, so that's sort of the only one sort of criticism I'd have, have to say, just because of how the camera works during that those certain cutscenes. So let's talk about sound. So talking about the sound effects to start with. So the things such as explosions, spell effects, noises when you you're attacking enemies, they're all very clear and crisp. You know, suit the gameplay very well, especially the fast-paced nature of it. The musical score is very good, so it's orchestral throughout the game mainly. Uh, it suits the tone of the game well, so when you're in battle or during certain cutscenes, if a mood or tone, you know, shifts, the music is usually very appropriate and indicates sort of the, you know, the direction of the sort of a move, whether it's somber, uplifting. It's used very well. Uh, voice recording is done very well, both in English and Japanese. Uh, the only thing that does let it down is the dialogue can be a little bit cringeworthy at times. Um, as with a lot of Japanese games, you sometimes find that. A lot of the characters are sort of cliches of themselves. So you got the stoic leader. You got someone who's a bit of a, a bit of a dick, basically, or usually you know lightens up. You got the female characters. You got ones that are quiet, ones that are very sort of anime-ish, you know, very giddy sort of girl type characters. And then you got other ones that were flown in there for comedic effect. You know, someone's a bit pompous. You got the usual tropes in there, but the actual recording of the voices is done very well and it's very clear. 
So, good point. So, graphically, quite enjoy it. It's very anime based, very bright and colourful ball to look at. The gameplay is enjoyable. Uh, it's very drastically different to the other games. I think if you've not played any of the other games, you're going to enjoy this more. It's very similar to, as I mentioned at the beginning, like games like Dynasty Warriors, and it's very hack and slash uh, with magical elements thrown in. And there's a lot of things to do, building up your characters, you know, developing weapons, building their skills. So you're not going to be short of things to do, and the game's quite long as well. There's a lot of um, plot to get involved with, a lot of cutscenes um, and gameplay, you know, it's satisfying uh, uh, when you do actually play it. So, the bad points. Well, the biggest one for me is a dramatic change in gameplay style. Don't get me wrong, it's good, but it's so different to the previous games. It doesn't, doesn't actually feel like it's an instalment in the actual series. I much prefer the turn-based combat in the previous games. And I've replayed them quite a lot for that basis. You know, some of the battles you know, were long, but were more satisfying the combat. And victory was more rewarding because, you know, you could have a battle that was up to an hour, hour and a half. Whereas in here, it can be done quite quickly. It just feels too actiony, too hack and slash. Um, you know, you can change your sort of your spells and so on, which you know it adds a bit of a right of combat. Um, but really, it just seems like we're almost like red, mainly just for colourful effects on the screen and to see some bright colours. And, you know, it doesn't feel like there's any sort of weight really between you know around your decisions in in terms of what armor, what weapons you're going to equip on characters. I feel like the developers have gone in a you know completely different step and not for the better. The other thing that really sort of bugged me on this game was the actual length of cutscenes. So the plot's quite heavy, there's a lot going on, but the cutscenes can, in between actual playable chunks of the game, in not just combat, but bits where you can actually move your main character around to actually you know, stop on weapons, you're sometimes looking at maybe 20 up to 30 minutes of different cutscenes that go on and on and on, and because it's sort of very stereotypical in each sort of the characters, and because of the issues I mentioned with the camera earlier, where you can only tell who was actually talking at the time, it feels like sometimes that when it, the plot, plot's a bit, a little bit disjointed, but it just goes on so long, the temptation to you know, skip the cutscene just so you can actually get to a chunk where you can control your character is too great, and I feel the balance is, you know, too heavy on this long narrative rather than the actual gameplay itself. And it, for me, it got to a point where. Really, I stopped caring. I was like, you know, I've got another cutscene. It just became frustrating rather than gameplay where you, you know, cutscenes where you think, oh, yeah, I am keen to know what's going on. And this, it just kept the case of, like, oh, here we go, yet another cutscene. And I think for that, you know, that's one of the um, that we game sort of a major blow, really. Um, and if you've not done it any service whatsoever. So, to give you my overall opinion of Valkyria Revolution, um, quite disappointed and underwhelmed with it, really. It's not what I'd imagined and I think fans of the previous games looking for the same sort of turn-based combat are going to be very disappointed. If you're new to the series you're probably going to get more out of it than any sort of long-term fan. In um, fact with the, you know, coupled with the overly long cutscenes that just seem to drag on and on and on it just dilutes the enjoyment of the game massively. Um, so it's quite mediocre at best really. I wouldn't pay a full price for this game by any means. I'd definitely wait for it to come down in cost, get it on sale, or if you know somebody's got it, just borrow it. Again, I say new people are probably going to find it more enjoyable than long term fans. I'm going to give this game a score out of 10. I'd say 5 is the best I can do. It's got some merits there, um, it just doesn't feel like a Valkyria game. And I think for that, it's, um, it's going to alienate fans and not get many new ones either, really. But yeah, so. I'd definitely wait for a sale or borrow it, um, but don't waste your, full, you know, your money on a, a bank, buying it brand new. You're going to be, really, you know, come away quite annoyed, really.